You know, when I go flying, there's one thing that I wear that all my friends call me a dork. Until now, let's get into it. Hey everybody, welcome back to E3TV. And today, yes, we are talking about helmets. Now, I did joke a little bit about my friends and stuff, but more and more, a lot of my friends and people I know that are flying planes like these, bush flying, aerobatics and things, we're all wearing helmets now. And now they're getting even better. You know, if you think about the helmets over the years, and we'll bring up some of the other ones and stuff, is they really haven't evolved much. There hasn't been a whole lot of innovation in helmets and things. This is probably one of the first helmets that I've seen and it's from Lyft that is the first time I've started to really see some innovations come into place on helmets. So today we're gonna to go ahead and we're gonna talk about helmets. We're gonna talk about these helmets. I'm gonna do an unboxing because we have the Series 1. Then we have the V2.1 here. We're gonna talk about those. We're gonna talk about why you should wear a helmet, different instances and why I wear a helmet and some of the things I love about it. And then we're gonna jump in the plane, we're gonna go fly, and I'm gonna show you some of the differences in this helmet versus the other helmet because with this new design, and this new Lift 2.1, there are some really cool things that I really love about it that make my flying even more enjoyable. We're gonna go ahead and dig in. Now, I'm gonna tell you that I'm not gonna be covering helmets for military or helicopters. I'm really gonna focus on my own experiences and more just general aviation, specifically like bush flying, seaplane flying, like this plane here, the aerobatic flying, things like that. That's what I'm gonna kind of focus on as we go through this. So military, obviously there's very specific reasons why they what they wear helmets from you know whether camouflage the helmets they can get their call signs on it so you know you got a lot of pilots out on the deck or whatever you can see their call signs and things like that they need to be able to put oxygen masks on here uh, night vision systems different things that they need it for but i'm going to really stick to civilian when it comes to that all right so let's talk about some of the reasons that i like wearing a helmet and it's one of those things, like I said, my friends are now starting to wear them. Once they try it, they're wearing them more, they're buying helmets. Once you, it's one of those things that once you try it, once you wear it a few flights, you like, you don't want to not have it. So that's how it's been for me, which is why upgrading to this helmet has just been a joy. And I'll talk about that. One of the things I really like about it is it's quiet. I mean, it just is so much more quiet wearing the helmet and it gives you this sense of comfort in things as well. So that's one of the big things that I like about it. So the quiet is one piece. And in this particular helmet, we did go with the noise canceling light speed system and um, liking that so far. Obviously when it's quiet and light, which this is really light, it uh, is less fatigue. So if you're on a longer flight and things like that, it definitely makes it more enjoyable as opposed to having a heavier helmet on that. And I'll show you my old helmet right here. And this is just way heavier. And this weighs a ton. And there's a lot of different features that I'll tell you about that I like on this one versus my old helmets and stuff. So, you know, if it's lighter on your, your head as you're flying a long distance, it definitely is less fatigue. And then you've got to think about in these planes, you know, aerobatic, obviously, why you want to be wearing a helmet. You're pulling G's, your head's whapping around, which is also why having a light helmet makes a huge difference. But in these planes, bush flying, cubs, uh, the carbon cub right here, I mean, we've got poles right over our head. You get into some turbulence and things like that. There's been times where I've hit my head when I'm wearing a helmet and it would have hurt if I didn't. We also have GoPro mounts in here. You know, there's all kinds of stuff in this that have all kinds of hazards. When we're flying aerobatics, just think about the debris and stuff like that that can happen. I mean, we fly with GoPros in there and unfortunately if a camera came off or somebody dropped their phone, you know, having that thing fly when you're pulling G's and doing barrel rolls and it hits you in the head or something, you know, that could be a real issue. So it's really important flying aerobatics. And then in these planes, you know, if we're out bush flying and stuff, you got some pretty serious landings. You could hit a rock or something, you're going over forward. In the float planes or the amphibs, big time. You know, you, you go over on, on a float plane, you're definitely going to be hitting your head. There's no doubt about it. There's not a whole lot of people that get out of nosing over in a float plane. So uh, having a helmet in that situation is, uh, is important as well. Something else to think about. In these planes, you know, that windshield is not like the glass on our jets or anything like that. If you get a bird strike in this, it's very likely that bird strike will go right through the plane, in your face, 
and now you've got wind prop wash all in your face as you're trying to fly and, and communicate and navigate. And it's great having this because number one, hopefully if your visor's down, you won't have any uh, damage to your face. But even if it's not and you have a bird strike come through and your window shatters, just drop your visor down and you fly as normal. You've got some protection and things on your face. Also in aerobatics, I'm sure you've heard it. I'm sure you've seen videos on YouTube. You know, sometimes those canopies can come off. If it's not latched right, or, you know, if something hits it or bumps it, you know, that canopy can come off the top of that plane. And it's really hard to concentrate and deal with the situation when you also got 150 knot wind in your face. So again, you lose your canopy or a canopy break, breaks, you just drop down your visor and you're back on track. Now we did talk about the aerobatics a little bit. You know, there's been some injuries just from, and you hear a lot of pros and cons out there. People are like, oh, you don't want to wear a helmet doing aerobatics because the weight of the helmet is going to hurt you. There's been a lot of injuries on that. Yeah, there's been some, but the reality is there's been more issues that have nothing to do with, you know, flipping over, pulling G's and things like that. And the reality is when you not, when you get to this helmet, it makes a world of a difference. This thing is less than two pounds and it's extremely strong, stronger than my last helmet. You know, then of course there's other occupations, whether it's banner towing or agriculture or whatever it may be. It's just great to, to wear a helmet. So I think that this is a game changer because I think it's the first time that a helmet is innovated to the point, got as light as it is with a lot of the features and stuff that we're going to talk about that gets to a point where it like really makes sense and it's almost like a no-brainer. Why not wear it? There's so many pros to wearing a helmet like this. So let's talk a little bit more about it and uh, get into it. Now this helmet came out of a project with Lyft Aviation sister companies, Lyft Airborne Technologies. And it was for a United States Air Force contract to get an innovative helmet built for them with some mil spec and some very specific requirements. Now, this helmet is what won that contract. And I will tell you that this helmet is almost identical to the one that they made making for uh, the Air Force with a few modifications. Obviously, they mount some different stuff on it, uh, impedance and things like that on the, the mics and stuff is a little different, but this is the exact same helmet. So this is what the military is switching over to. So that's how this new helmet, the 2.1, the Core 2.1 came about. So before we talk about the AV 2.1, we're gonna go ahead and open up the 1.1. And uh, I have the older one of these from a couple of years ago. This is a brand new one that we're gonna talk about which I love. There's a little bit, little bit of difference in the new one. And then we go to the 2.1. We'll get more into the 2.1 here in just a minute, but let's do a little bit of an unboxing and then I'm gonna get into some really cool details of this. Now, I haven't unboxed this one yet. So this is the first time I'm actually opening the original version. Now I will tell you that the original version doesn't mean it's better or worse than this one. It has a very different mission. It's a lot of people that just want a real simple helmet no frills or don't need to do a whole lot of modifications or it doesn't need to be modular or anything like that. So they go to this version. And this version is a little bit different than my original one. My original one has the visor that comes around with a strap. This one, I think this kind of newer version of this is way better and we're gonna talk about it by way. Like I said, this is the first time I'm seeing this. So way lighter than my old one, um, but it is pretty standard helmet. So for people that want to keep the cost down, but still want a really good helmet, you can do that. I know that their new visor system that they have has seven different visors that you can choose from. So this is, a, I think this is going to be what my wife's going to be wearing, but this is actually really nice helmet. You got the magnetic strap here. We got the light speed in here. It has the same technology, the core that we'll talk about inside here as well. Cool features here. You got your vents here. And we're gonna talk about the vents on the 2.1 when we get to that. So this is a really solid helmet, new version of the 1.1. I actually really like this. And uh, let's see what else they got in here. So we got the pads to be able to adjust the ears. You definitely wanna do that. Um, we're gonna talk about sizing and stuff like that in a second because this one is fully customizable and they have a non-customizable version of that. And then you've got this helmet here and you've got some different sizes like medium, large, extra large stuff. And then you just adjust the pads inside your ear pieces here to get them to fit against your head good. So we've got our pads for doing that. Um, so in the two and the 1.1, you've got the bag for the, hel for the helmet. So not a whole lot in this particular one, but like I said, this is a no frills 
I suggest anybody grab one of these if you're flying any of these kinds of planes. It's a nice helmet, but I really want to talk about the 2.1 with you. Now I'm going to bring up my old helmet here for some examples when I go back and forth and talk about, you know, what I like about the new helmet. So let's first talk about the light speed connectors. One thing I didn't realize until I actually got the helmet and I got in the plane and I'm like, this is awesome, is you have a quick connect from the back of your helmet and then this of course goes into your plane. So what usually happens in this, my old helmet, if I want to take this out or, you know, I want to bring the helmet out with me or something, I got to undo, like if I got some wire ties or something, I have to undo everything because this is all hardwired. So it's plugged into the plane and if I want to take this out, I got to unplug everything. In this situation, you just have this quick connect off the back of your helmet. So you land, I reach up and back, pop that off, helmet comes off just like that. Can hang, put it up in front, hang it, whatever I need to do, and I don't have to disconnect all of my wires and stuff. So that's really cool. And of course, you got the light speed, Bluetooth, all that kind of great stuff with it. Now, you have the inner visor, and then we have the outer visors. Now, you can pick the different colors and stuff like we talked about. The Outer visor just basically needs a bag and stuff in here for it, but you can pull it out of the bag, drop it on here if you need it, and it's magnetic, boom, all ready to go. And there it is, connected. That's kind of cool, I like that, and I'll show you this bag and stuff that comes with it. Let's pop that open. So first of all, you get the regular bag. You also get the big bag like we talked about. And this particular helmet, because it's so modular and adjustable, you've got the moisture wicking internal, pieces that go here, now you can adjust those. We also have the ear pads for this as well. So I had to actually uh, pull these in a little bit because when I put the helmet on, they're still just a little too far away from my head. So I have to adjust those. And I think this is the bag. Let's see what this is like. I think this is the bag to the visor. So when you get the visor in there, so you get this, which is basically magnetic. So this, I just pull it off, throw it up on top in the plane. When I'm using, flying, when I get done, I grab it, pull it out, boom, and it just attaches like that. So that's that. Then we've got the big bag. More adjustment pieces. So you can see this one's a lot more module. It's a lot more custom. Again, this is first time I'm seeing this with you guys. Really nice bag, soft inside. So this is the main bag that will go with the helmet that I throw in a plane when I store it. So not much of an unboxing, but let's talk more about the actual helmet and stuff. So a few things I like about this compared to my old one is I do like how this visor works. And there's a few things that I really like about it. One, as you can see here, there's these little tabs. I'll talk about a little bit more as we get going. But you know, one thing I don't like when I'm flying is trying to fumble for stuff, finding where's my top to pull down my visor, stuff like that. This works really well where you can just come up here, pull your little tabs down and it pulls it in place. The other thing that's nice that I like about this is this has, is a positive lock at different positions. So you can either be all the way down, like you see here, or if you want it up a little bit, it locks in place. One thing I like about that is sometimes if I wanna look down at my knee board, I don't wanna be looking through my visor. So usually I'll have it up just a little bit like that so I can still kinda of see my knee board and things like that without the visor dropping too far. This one, it goes all the way down and it locks in place or it's all the way up. This has got a great adjustment to it. Now, the other thing I like about this is if you come all the way back, boom, you got a mount attachments, whether it's a GoPro, night visions, whatever it is you want up here. Once you bring this all the way back, you still have that. I don't have that at all on my old helmet. You got to do some different modifications and stuff like that. So that's a pretty cool uh, feature. Then we talked about the light speed system. So of course on this one, it's all set up where you can flip it from each side. You can flick your mic over to this side. It's all ready to go. If you want it on your right side versus your left side, you can move this around to the other side as well. So that's ready to go with the mics. The light speed has been pretty good so far. And then on this one, we did opt in the magnetic. Um, and the way this magnetic one works, this one I had a hard time finding it and trying to find it and stuff, but this one works really well. So, you know, there it is, pop it on there. All you do is come up, grab with your finger, comes right off just like that. So I really like this design and how they did it. It's really easy to drop on there, real easy to pop off. So magnetic chin strap. Now this is one feature that really surprised me and it's a, an adjustment for the nape. So the nice thing about it is push it in 
And when your helmet's on, watch this. Sucks the helmet right in there. You pull it out, boom, and it just releases. I'll do it once more. This is a great setup. First time I've used one that is that works that well. So while we're on the back of this, I just want to kind of show you, you can see a few other things. One is the, I guess it's called the Colroy. I don't know if they call it Colroy, Colroid. Some of you guys can let me know down below with the proper way to, to say it, but you can actually see the technology that's built in here. Now we'll talk about this a little bit more, but basically it also gives you a lot of ventilation. When I'm wearing this helmet, I can literally feel the cool air running around the inside of my head. Look at the inside of that compared to my old one. This is like wearing a ski helmet. <laughs> it's like when you put this on, when I take this off, my whole head is sweating. And that's how most of my helmets have been until I've got to this one. And you can kind of see how the technology works to really keep things cool uh, inside this, which is really cool. So, which makes us not only extremely strong, but it makes it 22% makes it lighter and 32% stronger just with the carbon fiber and how this is built. So that in itself, I think is a, a huge, huge advantage on this helmet. The Coiroid Impact Liner is a technology used in helmets and other protective gear. It's designed to enhance impact protection through an innovative structure, which you can actually see it. It consists of thousands of polymer little tubes that are thermally welded together. This structure is engineered to provide superior impact absorption compared to traditional materials like the EPS and the stuff we already talked about. Upon impact, these tubes crumple into a controlled manner, which helps reducing energy transfer to the head or the body, like what we would experience in this carbon cub with these poles over us when we hit that. This design not only absorbs energy from direct impacts, but also from angled impacts, like when you're pulling G's or you hit your head on the side of the plane when you're doing some rolls. And that in itself can reduce rotational forces to the brain. That's critical factors in reducing concussions and other brain injuries. Now, initially developed in aerospace industry, this technology has found its ways into various applications, just like the space shuttle, uh, or including, uh, not limited to like bed helmets or motorcycle helmets, or a lot of other sports and things use this same technology. And as a matter of fact, in the new SpaceX Dragon capsule, they've using this technology, you can actually see it in some of the manufacturing of the Dragon capsule, which is pretty cool. And then what we also talked about is the breathability of this technology. The open tube structure that we just talked about, as you can see here, just creates for a whole lot of cooling and airflow that's going around the inside while you're uh, wearing this helmet. It keeps you really cool, especially down here in South Florida. So as you can see, like I talked about, there hasn't been a whole lot of innovation in helmets. Well, this is the first time I've kind of really seen that. And it, it really makes sense. It just makes so much sense for a helmet like this that you're wearing in a plane and it gets hot up in there and stuff. No air conditioning in the, uh, in the aerobatic planes. So I do want to talk about this a little bit more when it comes to the visor. And the reason I want to talk about this is because the field of view is absolutely incredible in this helmet. You get 45 degree more view in this helmet, the way this is set up. And when we jump in the plane and we fly, I'm going to talk to you about why that's important. Then uh, 45 degrees more than I typically have. So my old helmet, you know, I might be able to see view here and I got to really turn my head to see left or right. And in this helmet, I can kind of just look out the corners of my eyes and I've got all that field of view. That's a huge thing for me, especially flying these planes. Let me give you an example. When we're flying this plane here, I have a short final check that I do you know, I'm looking for my four blue lights or my four green lights, but my second part to that check is looking out at my mirrors to look across to see my gear is down on both sides. And I look at the mechanical interface on the top of the floats. So I kind of do that short final check and I look, I need to look out of the window down to the floats and you can probably see it right there. There's these little yellow things on the floats there that show water landing or, or ground landing. So I peek at that. Now on my old helmet, my helmet hits the window and I can't see, I can't literally see those mechanical indicators. With this helmet, because it's smaller, you can kind of see if we put the two of them side by side, look at the difference in the size of these and how bulky this one is compared to this. So this is stronger, lighter, more compact, and I can literally get up and actually see out to those mechanical indicators uh, on there. Or if I'm doing some backcountry flying or a bush flying in the tail drag or whatever. Sometimes I want to be able to look out, get that tire, look at it and things like that. So this uh, makes it a big difference to be able to do that as well. So let's talk about Lyft the company a little bit. And I will tell you that I bought this, you know, they did not give this to me. I bought these because I've been buying their stuff for a while. Like first thing I bought from Lyft is their shoes, pilot shoes, especially for flying aerobatics and stuff. 
I just love the way that these are. They feel great. They just work so well in the aircraft when you're uh, hitting the rudders and things like that. So I've been wearing their stuff for a while and they have some brand new shirts that I'm going to do a whole separate video just on their shirts because I was surprised. You know, a shirt's a shirt, right? You put on a shirt and it's like, all right, whatever, bring me, send me the shirt or whatever. And then when I wore this and you're wearing it on long flights and stuff like that, there's something about the material in their shirts that just is like absolutely perfect for a pilot in flying planes and stuff. So I'm going to do a whole separate video on their shirts. But, you know, Lyft is a great company. They stand behind their stuff. I will tell you, when you go to buy this helmet, take the time to size it right. Because if you go in with the 2.1, you know, the 1.1 is pretty general. You've got, you know, the standard, you know, in the 2.1, you only have a few options. You've got, you know, your small, large, extra large, things like that. Um, so not a whole lot of options. This, this is highly customizable. Now in the 2.1, there is two versions. You can just buy the general helmet. They have one, you get, you know, large, small, medium, large, extra large, and doesn't have a whole lot of customization. This one is fully customized. So the second option when you're buying the 2.1 is you can get it fully customized, which is what I did chose my different visors and things, chose the different headsets. You can do both, you can do light speed. Um, light speed's the way to go with them because they are a light speed dealer. So your warranty is gonna be better. The install is better with the light speed. And the company is just great. And the reason I was talking about take your time to measure it, is because like I said, this is a highly customizable version, the 2.1. You can measure your head and they give you all the instructions to do that. And then when you get it, make the adjustments and stuff with your headsets and things like that. So, but if for some reason you didn't feel like doing it and you ordered the wrong size or whatever, no problem. They'll take care of you. They'll take it back. They'll get you your next headset. Again, I paid for these. You know, they don't tell me to say this. I just know from working with them for a while that they're, they're great to work with. So that's a little bit about the company. And like I said, they have tons of options. They have tools you can work on this with. You got seven different visors. There's all kinds of different stuff that you can buy for this, which makes it highly modular. So. Really cool helmet. So let's do this. Let's jump in the plane. Let's go do some flying and let me show you why getting in and out of the plane, connecting my wires to it, being able to see outside and see my indicators on the floats, feeling the airflow through it. You get a really good feel of uh, what this is all about when we're flying. So let's go ahead, jump in the plane and we'll get going. See you in a minute. So as we were talking about everybody, one of the things that I do love about how sleek this helmet is. As I mentioned, on my short final check, I need to look out for my gear. So I'm checking for four blues if I'm landing on water or four greens if I'm landing on land. I look at my mirrors on the outside so I can see across to the uh, gear, make sure the gear are down. But most important is I need to look on top of the floats. Because on top of the floats is the mechanical indicators that are directly connected to the gear. So if they're as positive of an indicator as you can get. And in my old helmet, I would stop here and I couldn't actually see the floats. But as you can see in this helmet, I can see my gear down, gear up, no problem on each side. So that is uh, one big advantage. We also talked about field of view. When I'm landing in this plane, especially if you're doing a glassy water landing on a, on a lake or something, you, I really need my peripheral to be able to see what I can out there. Glassy water, the whole point is that you don't have a whole lot, but if I can get to pick up on land or something as I'm landing, that really helps. The field of view in this helmet is way out here. I can see the wingtips on this plane. In the last helmet, it was somewhere in here, and I always used to have to keep turning my head, so there's a, a much, much better field of view um, with this helmet, which is great. I, I have my glasses on and I don't have my hood down so that as I'm talking to you, you're not looking at my visor. But while these glasses on, if you wear reading glasses or anything like that, one thing that I love about this helmet is it's all the way down over the top of my glasses, which is nice. And then we did talk about the fact that you can lock this in different positions depending on what you want. Sometimes I want it locked right there so that if I need to pick up my head up a little bit and see my screens, or if I'm looking at a knee board, I don't have the all the way down and then it's hard to see on my knee board. But if you want, of course, I can pull it all the way down like this. But I just like the, the fact that this is locked in many different places, which is awesome. And then, of course, we talked about you could put a, a GoPro or something here on the front. And then as we talked about before, here's the connector that we talked about where when I'm done, I want to get out of the airplane. I can pull this off right here. 
And the helmet's disconnected. I don't have to take all of my wiring and stuff out of the airplane, which is one thing I hated in, the, in my old headset. You just have to put it all inside the helmet, keep it all together, where this is just really nice. The other reason I like that is because I like to sometimes just keep the helmet resting if I'm on a, a fly-in or we just go to breakfast. I'll just put it right on top of my stick here and just rest it there. I can disconnect it without taking everything off. Now, I know we went over some of the important reasons in these planes to wear a helmet. First of all, why not? This is very comforting and keeps it really quiet in here. But see all these bars, GoPro mounts, all these bars and stuff here. You know, if you hit turbulence or you get jostled back and forth, like I just actually hit these mounts. Really important, I think, to protect your head in, in places like this. So we just wanted to take a minute and show you a little bit about how it is inside the airplane. Plenty of room. My last helmet, I'd be hitting the prop here where I can really move around no problem with this helmet. So this left helmet has been so far a godsend. I've loved it. It's been one of my favorite helmets so far. So just want to give you a little bit of a feel inside the plane.